Hi, welcome to the video. Today I'm just going to show you the settings I use in Topaz Video AI to upscale the image you're, or the footage you're seeing on the screen right now. So here I am in Video AI version 6 and I'm just going to drag the original footage onto the screen, which is an AI generated video. And I'm going to just click start editing from scratch on the left hand side here. You do get a choice of presets that you want to start from on the right. But for the sake of this, I'm going to show you what, what I'm going to do from scratch. So start editing. Now this isn't going to be a full tutorial of every element of the software. I'm just going to show you what I used on this particular image. But I'm sticking to the original layout here, which is side by side preview, which is the original on the left and what will be the adjusted version on the right. And we've got pretty similar, just general sort of timeline controls at the bottom. Nothing too out of the, um, out of the ordinary. So I'm going to go to the top right hand side here and I'm going to start with the output resolution. So at the moment it's showing what the original file is because I haven't changed anything. So it's 10, 1072 by 720 pixels and the frame rate is 25 FPS. So for this kind of clean AI sort of input file that's good quality, I'm going to be keeping that. I'm just going to do a two times upscale on this and then it's going to pop up and ask what video type an AI model is. For this kind of video, AI generated video or any kind of modern clean video, it's almost always going to be progressive. So let's leave it on progressive. And then the AI model, this is where you can change the model depending on your um, out, you know, your desired output. You've got some here that are specialized for enhancement of faces, some that are good for um, you know denoising when there's a lot of grain and noise in the footage, some that are specialized for four times upscaling like this rear here um rear here <laughs> and then you've got some others here that are you know recommended for for different things as well now i'm just going to use proteus for this again because it does say for most videos so if you've got a relatively clean starting point with good detail and um, you just want to enhance you know enhance the size and also maybe change the frame rate just proteus is absolutely fine and um, feel free to explore the other options though and underneath we've got add noise and recover detail now this bit here this this can be confusing at first because you've got add noise then underneath you've got add grain and they're not the same thing add grain is a visual thing it's like adding film grain on the top but adding noise if we go over here it says add a layer of digital noise to videos before processing used for reducing the effect of noise reduction and texture smoothing when using enhancement so basically what this is saying is as part of the enhancement process and the upscaling and the um, interpolation of the frame rate changes and stuff like that some natural grain in the image will get smoothed out even if you've not specifically requested it to be because that's just how it works and by injecting extra noise into the footage behind the scenes initially it can kind of help to counteract that almost compensate for that a little bit so um, it's not going to add lots of noise onto your final footage afterwards but it's hopefully going to mean that maybe some of the fine details don't look quite as smoothed over um, on the edit so we can um, we could put that up a little bit. I'd, I've I've experimented with this in quite extreme parameters, and that's what I'd um, encourage you to do. But I'm going to keep it quite low for this. Recover detail. This is kind of blends some of the original footage back in over the top of the final footage to just kind of again help to mitigate an overly smooth appearance. I always leave that as default setting, to be honest. Focus fix not relevant to this grain apply grain right this is where you can actually get a little bit of that sort of film grain look to the final footage now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to click on apply grain and i'm going to zoom in on our um zoom in on our footage here so now bearing in mind this hasn't this preview is not updated yet so it looks the same as the before and because i'm using an old m1 macbook pro and it's not well for video AI it's a slow machine and um, it'll take ages to update the preview I'm going to show you a little trick like I'm confident enough to know that my upscale amount and the AI model is going to give me a good result but I want to see specifics of how the grains affecting the image so all you need to do is just go in the timeline somewhere and just press I for like your in, in point mark in or you can click this little bracket down in the corner and then just literally go a few frames forwards and click O for out. So if you play that, it's just it's just a couple of frames, literally just flies by like that. There's nothing to it. 
But what it means now is you can just put your uh, marker in the middle and now when, you, when you're making some adjustments to things like grain, where it's going to make a visual difference, you now just can click this render in out button down here in the bottom left and it's going to render that output but it's going to be very quick because we've only selected a tiny bit which doesn't matter because once you're happy with the results of how it looks um, on that one frame then it's you know it's, it's basically going to apply that across the whole thing so then you can open it up a little bit obviously if you've got a much more powerful machine you don't have to worry about doing this you can just render the you know pre-render the whole the whole thing or a much larger chunk so I might just I might just make the chunk a bit bigger. So I'll press O there to get a bigger out point and then render in and out. Just so maybe we've got a little bit of motion. So we're clicking on it and when you see the bars going completely green there, that means that it's um it's it's pre-rendered that bit. So we can play now. As you can see, it's literally only a few frames, but now you can see the effect of the grain. Um, and the grain is animated. You can see it's kind of it's not like a static overlay. So now what you can do is go, is let's just stop this a minute. Stop video playback. And let's just have a look at it. Now, the grain is too big for me, for this image, I think. I'll actually take the grain size down to one. Um, and I might take the grain, grain amount down a little bit. Now, it's disappeared here, but that's just because we've made changes and we haven't re-rendered the preview. So now if I re-render the preview, in a few moments it'll come back with the new grain settings there we go which is a lot more subtle but it's still definitely there and if we want to zoom in to have a little look things so see that's that's a lot more natural looking to me you don't want to overdo the grain because it can um, it can just make it look a little bit forced okay so now we've done that bit we can go down to there's another bit here that says parameters enable parameters click on that and I've got mode dynamic and manual. Now, if we look at how it explains the how it explains the different modes, it's got dynamic enables controls for adjusting automatically detected optimal settings, and manual full control over all settings. So what this is basically saying is, for all of these for all of these parameters below, if you have it in dynamic mode, if you make an adjustment, it's going to adjust that based on what it already thinks is a good setting and then you're tweaking it a manual it's an absolute value from zero upwards so i generally don't tend to play with these too much because the footage i use is is tends to be quite clean but you can improve detail and you can hover over each of these you can see a tooltip coming up you need to improve fine texture and detail loss due to in-camera noise suppression now i i will adjust this up i'll leave this on dynamic so uh, and I'll adjust this up maybe by a small amount. Let's just try by to 20, which sounds a lot, but then because it's a dynamic slider, it's not um, It's not quite as, as much as it seems. Let's do that to 20 as well. Add a little bit of sharpness, and again, let's re-render our output. So this is how I work because of a slow machine. I almost treat it, when I'm doing the adjustments, I treat it as visual um, almost like a still, a still image. And then, because I know the motion's going to be good, I'm just concerned about, am I over sharpening it? Am I adding too much grain? Um, and I think maybe, maybe that looks okay. okay. Maybe a little, a little overdone there. Let's back that off a little bit. And let's move on. So that's all of our visual kind of effects and upscaling taken into account. And now we're down to the next section, which is frame interpolation. Which it's, it will automatically turn on if we change this. This is where we can change the frame rate. So it's 25 frames per second at the moment. And there's lots of, um, there's lots of discussion out there and, and people that know a lot more about this than I do, who have purest views in terms of um, frame rates that are compatible with other frame rates as in like 25 frames per second you should only you should put it to 50 not 60 if you want to um, interpolate it upwards because you know there's there's technical reasons why you should and shouldn't for me personally on this kind of thing I don't I really find it makes much of a difference but I'm just going to do 50 anyway I'm going to effectively double it um, AI model now this is where this is the separate to the model we've already covered. This is the model now that's 
um, directly associated with the frame interpolation. So in other words, if you're going slow-mo or if your speed has been up, you're injecting extra FPS into it like I am to make it smoother, we can have, again, there's lots of different versions here and the tool tips will give you a quick insight into um, into what's the what's the best one for your use. So let's just have a quick read down here. So you can see here it talks about, if you look in the top one, Apollo, towards the end of the sentence, the one it says, much faster processing than Chronos when you need more generated frames. When it talks about generated frames, it's talking like if you've done what I'm doing, you're going from 25 frames a second to 50. Well, those frames, those extra 25 frames, they've got to be created um, from scratch. And so obviously that's where the interpolation comes in. The software is creating those um, tween frames, those sort of in-between frames um, from scratch based on data that it's acquired from the rest of the footage. So um, I'm just going to leave it on that for the moment. Duplicate frames, leave it on replace. Sensitivity, I'll leave that as default. I'm not going to touch any of these others here. And then I'm just going to click export as. And I'm going to come back now and show you the before and the after.